Greetings, viewers. Welcome to Modern World Dynamics, your one-stop hub for all things intriguing and insightful. Today, we're going to dive into a topic that's as relevant as it is fascinating. We're exploring the perception that men are the primary financial providers, even as women's contributions continue to grow. Drawing from the findings of a Pew Research Center survey, we'll be peeling back the layers of this contemporary issue. Imagine this. In about one third of married or cohabiting couples in the United States, women are contributing half or more of the earnings. Yet the perception persists that men are the chief breadwinners. Intriguing, isn't it? In this video, we'll delve into why this is the case, how this dynamic varies based on factors like education and race, and the implications it has on our society. We'll also sprinkle in some humor along the way because who said learning can't be fun? Stay with us as we delve deeper into this fascinating dynamic of the modern world. Ah, the financial dynamics of couples, a topic as old as time itself, yet as modern as the latest smartphone model. Let's delve into this, shall we? Now, picture an average American couple, let's call them Jane and John. In the past, it was almost a given that John would be the breadwinner of the family. But times are changing. According to a Pew Research Center survey, in about one third of married or cohabiting couples like Jane and John, women are now contributing half or more of the earnings. That's right, Jane is bringing home the bacon just as much as John, if not more. But let's not get too carried away. The same survey found that in most couples, men still contribute more of the income. This is a reflection of the higher value society places on a man's role as a financial provider. It seems we're not ready to completely let go of the old norms and expectations just yet. Interestingly, the survey also revealed that men are more likely than women to emphasize the importance of being a financial provider. Yet, when asked about the qualities of a good spouse or partner, being caring and compassionate ranked higher than being a financial provider. It seems that while money matters, it's not the be-all and end-all. Now let's go back to Jane and John. Let's say Jane has a higher educational attainment than John. According to the survey, the relative financial contributions of men and women vary based on their level of education. Jane, with her higher education, might be contributing more financially to the household than John. In conclusion, the financial dynamics within couples are not as black and white as they used to be. With more women like Jane stepping up to the plate, the financial landscape within couples is changing, albeit slowly. It's a bit like watching a glacier move. You know it's happening, but it's not exactly a rapid process. So, as we can see, the financial landscape within couples is changing, albeit slowly. Now, let's talk about the weight of financial responsibility, who should bear it, who does bear it, and why. In a world where bills pile up and dreams often come with a dollar sign attached, being a financial provider is undeniably a role of significance. But how important is it really in the grand scheme of relationships? According to a Pew Research Center survey, men are more likely than women to emphasize the importance of being a financial provider. But is this because they feel it's their duty? Or is it because they believe it's what society expects of them? The reality could be a complex mix of both. Interestingly, the same survey revealed that being caring and compassionate ranked higher than being a financial provider when it comes to being a good spouse or partner. It seems that we value the emotional currency of love, understanding and empathy more highly than the financial currency of dollars and cents. That's heartening, isn't it? But it's also a bit paradoxical. On one hand, we have the traditional perception of men as the main breadwinners, a role they seem to endorse. On the other hand, we value qualities that have nothing to do with paychecks and everything to do with personal character. So, while money might make the world go round, it seems it doesn't necessarily make the heart grow fonder. It's a fascinating dichotomy, really. On the surface, we recognize the importance of being a financial provider. We understand the practical necessity of it. But deep down, we know that money can't buy happiness. It can't buy love. It can't buy the warmth of a caring partner or the comfort of a compassionate companion. In the end, perhaps the importance we place on being a financial provider isn't about money at all. Perhaps it's about the sense of security, stability and responsibility that comes with it. Perhaps it's about the confidence that stems from being able to support oneself and one's loved ones. And perhaps it's about the satisfaction derived from contributing to a shared future. Clearly, financial provision is important, but it's not the be-all and end-all of being a good partner. Remember to like and subscribe to Modern World Dynamics for more interesting insights like this.
Demographics, my dear viewers, can change the game entirely. Let's see how. When we dive into the nitty-gritty of financial contributions in relationships, we find an intriguing pattern. Our views about money and its role in relationships are deeply influenced by factors such as race, age, and education. Imagine walking into a room full of couples. You'll see different faces, different backgrounds, and different stories. But here's something fascinating. The way these couples view financial contributions varies significantly. For instance, if we group couples based on their race, we see a noticeable trend. Black and Hispanic couples tend to place a higher value on financial support in a relationship compared to white couples. It's not about a competition of who earns more, but the importance they attach to being able to provide for the family. Now let's pull another thread. Education. It's no secret that education often influences our earning potential, but did you know it also shapes our views on money and relationships? The data shows that adults with lower incomes and less education often place a higher value on a spouse or partner's ability to provide for a family. It's like saying, it doesn't matter if you can quote Shakespeare as long as you can pay the bills. Finally, let's talk about age. Ah, the ever-changing perspectives that come with growing older. Younger couples are increasingly sharing the financial burden, moving away from traditional notions of men being the primary breadwinners. Meanwhile, older couples tend to stick to the traditional model. It's like they say, old habits die hard. As we journey through these demographic variations, we find an array of perspectives, different narratives shaping our beliefs and attitudes towards money and relationships. It's a bit like a financial kaleidoscope, isn't it? So, it seems that who we are and where we come from can shape our views on money and relationships in quite significant ways. As we wrap up this enlightening journey, let's summarize what we've learned. The traditional perception of men as the primary financial providers is slowly changing. Women now contribute half, or even more, of the earnings in about a third of American couples. However, men still contribute more in most couples, reflecting the stubborn persistence of societal norms. Yet, it's fascinating to note that both men and women rank being caring and compassionate higher than being a financial provider when it comes to being a good spouse or partner. It seems the heart still rules over the wallet, doesn't it? Of course, these dynamics vary significantly across different demographics. Factors such as race, age, education and income levels all play a part in shaping these perceptions and realities. For instance, those with lower incomes and less education place a higher value on a spouse's ability to provide financially. And here's the kicker. Despite the evolving financial dynamics, men are still more likely to emphasize the importance of being a financial provider. Talk about a plot twist. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned to Modern World Dynamics for more enlightening content. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning. Hey there, aspiring creators. Ever wondered how to turn your passion into a paycheck? Well, buckle up because we've got something extraordinary for you. Introducing the AI YouTube Automation Masterclass, the ultimate game changer in the world of content creation. Here's what you're about to unlock. Discover the secrets behind making a five-figure income monthly. Learn the strategies that took us from dreaming to earning and how you can do it too. Imagine making money while you sleep. We'll teach you how to create content that works for you allowing you to enjoy the fruits of your labor with just three days of dedicated effort. Watch your channel skyrocket as we spill the beans on how we've successfully grown four channels from zero to over 100,000 subscribers. It's not just a class, it's a proven formula for YouTube success. Say goodbye to your traditional job and hello to a life of freedom. Take control of your destiny, work only three days a week, and spend quality time with your loved ones while making 10 times your current income. But here's the real kicker. Be an early adopter of artificial intelligence in content creation. Don't be left behind. Be a pioneer in the AI revolution. Get in early and let AI be your creative ally. It's not just about making videos, it's about making history. So are you ready to unleash the power of AI and become the next YouTube sensation? Click the link below, join the AI YouTube Automation Masterclass and let's turn your dreams into reality.